Hey everybody, welcome to part three of the two loaded Kennedys. Uh, I'm going to try and knock out uh, a lot this episode, if not most of this, maybe even conclude the Kennedys on this episode. Without further ado, let's rock right into it. Shaviv deburring tool. Um, I'm not familiar with these, but it does say by Vargas. So it's Vargas deburring tools, but this is Shaviv deburring tool. So the case is that typical try and make it look fancy breadboarding and cheesy clasp of of yesteryear, but uh, what's inside is a very snazzy deburring set. I've never seen anything like this. Um, we've got like a master handle, okay, metal. And it comes with numerous attachments, which also have the ability to telescope. Uh, to telescope. All right, so must be a way that this must be a way this. Oh, okay. Oh, that's all right. That's neat. Pull this down. Oh, I like that. Okay. All right. So I think I just found my new deburring tool for life. All different kinds of attachments and everything here. Kind of a neat set. I've got a lot of deburring tools that I'm going to have to be getting rid of cheap. When I first saw this, I thought it was like the other set that was in one of the other boxes, which was just a little lame uh, little tool kit uh, with a little tiny quarter-inch drive ratchet and a bunch of various bits. Um, turns out, no, this is the Unibit set by Irwin. Okay, step drills. Step drills are for drilling through thin material, um, and they allow you to uh, essentially drill holes from as small as that size there all the way up to that size without changing the bit. And then with this set, being able to change between these four, you can, you can drill holes in thin material from this little size right here, okay, which is an eighth of an inch, all the way up to this size here, which is an inch and three eighths. I think I only have one step drill and I don't remember what range it has, so I'm gonna keep that. Mitotoyo 193-211, uh, it says it's a M825 one inch. And what we got is we have a, a zero to one inch counting uh, direct reading tenths micrometer, 0 0.0001. Ratchet thimble. No, not a ratchet thimble. Friction thimble. Friction thimble. Lock works. Works nice and smooth. Everything seems to be working perfectly fine. That, that's a nice little find right there. Hmm. Might have to. I don't know. <laughs> Thinking of keeping that one. I don't know. This is a nicer box. Stare it. Okay. Doesn't have the, the pretty little bead boarding that you have on the other one, though. But this is solid wood. Tell by the end grain. And what is in this beautiful stare it fancy box? Eh. It's okay. It's a uh, what it is is it's uh, one of these uh, Starrett 657 um, magnetic indicator bases, which I have a couple of these now. Uh, it's in really nice condition. It's got the uh, the clamping nut here, or whatever you call it, the rod on it. It has the uh, doohickey here to allow you to clamp a um, indicator that has I think that's for this kind of lug back indicator but it also comes with a button back indicator all right like a 196 but this is this is a 650 this looks almost brand new looking for some rub marks or something on the back of the button here 
I don't see anything. This might be brand new. And then uh, this hole, uh, whatchamacallit here? This is to reach into like a bore. Oh, oh, ow. Oh. All right, I see. So you take this cap off the top and you screw this on. All right, so when you look down inside this hole after you take this cap off, there is a uh, the rod, okay, that, that this right here continues in. And on top of that rod, there's a pin that sticks up. And what you have to do is you stick the other end of this that has a hole in it down over that pin and then thread this on. And you have now converted this indicator into a nice, long-reaching uh, indicator for the inside of a bore. Okay? This would be great for lathe work. So this, this thing will do everything that a button-back indicator, like a 196, will do, and more. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this sweet puppy for myself. And... Um, sell my 196 set. I just sold one. It was an older one I, I had just acquired with this lot. But I have, I think, one that I kept for myself. And I actually even have, actually it's still sitting right here on the bench because I pulled it out. I pulled this one out for somebody who was looking for just a 196 without the kit, which I have one here. I don't know if this is going to suit his purposes or not. But I could, I could dump all my 196s, keep this, and I could also dump my extra... Um, 657 mag bases and that's how I'm going to justify in my mind keeping this uh, expensive set for myself so this is the uh, the set so it's called a, uh, a 657-650Z the 657 is the mag base by itself the 650 is the indicator by itself and then in the set it's the 657-650Z the um, Suggested retail price on the current website for Sterrett is $570. Amazon. I mean, a lot of us know Amazon is a great place to get pricing on things. Here it is. It's $600.15 with free shipping. So let's check eBay. All right. So here's a guy on eBay. He's selling them brand new for $606 with free shipping. All right, so then oh, $303? No, because look what's right below it. The first result that comes up is a used one that, you know, looks like it's in pretty good shape. $149.95 or best offer with fast and free shipping. If you're looking for one of these sets and you're drooling over this one and you this video isn't old by the time you've seen it, I would go check this thing out. Throw an offer at this guy and see what he'd take for it. Let's see what they've sold for in the past, if we can find any. None of those have sold in the past, uh, 90 days or whenever it is that the soul goes back to these days. So it tries to find something close. The closest thing it can find is it can find the 650AZ1, uh, A1Z set, which appears to be the indicator, the 650 indicator with some attachments, but no mag base in a regular case. Uh, brand new, it sold for $480. That's as close as we're going to get by the looks of it. One last word about this set that I found on eBay. It's actually not the same set. Uh, it's very close. Um, also, I looked at the close-up pictures, and um, this has considerable wear on it. You can see all the scratches and everything on the face of the uh, indicator stand. The indicator base, at least, has been used a lot. The indicator itself looks clean. Uh, but it's got different attachments. You can even see the layout is different than on mine, or is it just upside down? Now it looks right. But it doesn't have this attachment. It doesn't have this long reach hole attachment. It's got something else in the corner there. It's got an extra long straight point that doesn't swivel. So it's a little bit different set. Hmm. All right. Well, everybody's probably like, get on with it, Steve. Get on with it. Well, here's a grand old pile of stuff. All right, here is a Stanley Square. That's funny, I found one of these almost brand new in the other box, I think. It was either Stanley or General. And this one's okay. You know, this one says Stanley made in England. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if the other one was made in England or if it was USA. I don't remember anymore. It's a number 46-123. 
we go square. Not a lot of value there, but still decent square. Um, we have what appears to be a homemade uh, stop. Okay, so it's got the T-bolt right on it. Put this right down. Clamp this right down on your uh, on your milling machine table and uh, adjustable stop, so that you can have your vise sitting here. Put a piece in, bring it right up against the stop. So and you're making multiples of of an item. These are really handy to have. I think I have a couple of these already. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to have any interest in that, but I could probably not have to keep as many as I have. Uh, we have standard dye makers grease, fast dispersing detergent and rust preventative additives, extreme pressure char characteristics. So I guess extreme pressure means you could probably use this in a dead center if you still use dead centers. A chuck with a key. Looks like it's Jacob's. Yeah, this is, we got a Jacob 6A. Uh, so this is not a ball bearing chuck. I think this is just a regular chuck. With a straight shank on it, so we can put that right in a collet. Alright, so that's a nice little chuck there. I could probably part with that. Transfer punch set. Uh, looks to be fairly complete. And the maker is huh. Spellmanco. Spellmanco. S P E L L M A N C O. Not familiar with that name. Look like they've got some use on them. But none of the points look badly damaged, so I'd say that's a, a good usable set. I'll take a look at the one I have now. Uh, you know, keep the better, sell the other. This is a collet stop. Uh, for those of you who do not know what a collet stop is, this particular one is a hard inch SS5C collet stop. Okay. So, what this is, is uh, I actually have one of these already, but it's this one is, um, looks like it's all original. This looks like a uh, import brand one. Okay. Whereas this, this part right here is the hardinch stop. This rod, well, I'll tell you what's going on here. This rod looks like it's in backwards. Why would they do that? All right, so let me show you how it's supposed to work. So um, 5C collet, not all 5C collets have threads on the inside. So you've got to have a collet, 5C collet with threads inside. I think all the hardinch ones do. This isn't a hard engine, it does, so that's a good sign. But, anywho, check this out. This threads in here, on the back of the collet. So this threads in on the back of the collet, all right? Then, you put your collet in to your fixture or whatever, right? And now, you've got a rod in here that you can adjust. You loosen this lock nut and adjust this. You can adjust how far in or how deep this hole is on this collet. So again, for repeatability, if you want to do multiple items, or even if you just want to make sure that if you take a piece out and you put it back in, that every time you put it back into the collet, it stops at the same spot. That's what that's for. Pretty simple design. Um, you know, you could use this on some fixtures, but not all. For instance, you can't use this on a collet block set because the, the closer or the clamping uh, device for a collet block set uh, has to be able to clear this area right here. So. so this one's a little bit of a mystery because the way it's set up right now, I mean, it, it does act as a stop that way, but I mean, you'd have to use it on a pretty large diameter, on larger diameters for one thing. So that's why, to me, this almost appears as if this is on here backwards. Like if we take the locking nut, uh, loosen it, take this, unthread this, spin it around so that this end is going in and doing the stopping. Or maybe it's double duty, you know, you put it in for this side for larger diameter collets and put it in for this side for smaller diameter collets. I don't know. But anyways, if I have this one, I can't imagine I ever need this one. This one seems like it's more versatile to me. 
even though this centerpiece right here almost smacks of homemade like this nut and everything or is this appears to be all factory original i don't know uh bondus made in the usa uh really good shape don't look like you've seen much use with the ball ends on them uh, these are nice uh, eventually i'll have to look through and get rid of a few of these sets because i have multiples and we got two uh i guess these would be sheet metal tools these are Roper Whitney. Oh, I've heard of that company. Roper Whitney of Rockford, Illinois. Uh, this is a um, notcher. This is a larger notcher. Okay. This little guy right here does this. And this big guy here does this. I'm just going to do two more items on this video and uh, end it there, no matter how long it is uh, or how short it is, just because I did way too much ratchet, John, in the beginning there. This is a Sears Craftsman uh, number 952381 50-piece tap and die set, combination standard and metric. Um, so I don't know why these all fell out. You would think. Well, let me take a second. Okay, I took some time sorting this set and putting things back in where I believe they should belong. And uh, right now I'm missing four pieces. This is supposed to be a 50-piece set, but what's confusing me is that there's only 49 locations here. Unless they're counting this tap handle and its rod as two pieces, which I don't get. But I mean, right now I'm missing the metric pipe tap, this pipe tap, is not marked Craftsman, so it might not be original to the set. I'm not sure. It was in here, though. Uh, one other stand, uh, one other uh, SAE tap here. So I'm missing two taps total. The handle, bad news for me, uh, this is a VM Series Craftsman tap wrench that I found. It does not fit this. It's clearly not the correct one. All right, so I think we're going to... Uh, just call this as complete as it's going to get for now. I might find a cheap tap wrench that just fits in there. Just so I can put a tap wrench in there and sell the set as almost complete. All right, one more item we're going to take a look at real quick here. And uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Now, the uh, other Kennedy box that I sold, it was the type of box that had not a draw on the bottom, but it had the uh, the cubby hole that the, the door swings up, you know. And... Uh, when I first looked in there, there wasn't much, but tucked in the back was this. No, this is not a Sterrett fire extinguisher. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I've never seen, until I looked online to see what the heck this was worth, I had never seen a Sterrett box like this. This is a steel box painted red um, from the factory. So... What could be in this thing? Talk about your off-the-hook expensive Starrett sets. Uh, I don't know if this is supposed to have both of these in here. But this is the one of these Starrett ring a ding things. That holds all these different contact points. Okay. And for some reason there's two of them in here. And I don't believe. Yeah. I'll, I'll go through this later just to verify. But I think that this is a duplicate. So I don't know why there's two of them in here. So I'll go through and compare these later. And you know verify if they're identical. And. I think I've already got one set aside for myself. I'll keep the one that's the most complete and sell the other two. Uh, I, know, I don't even know whether or not this is supposed to come in here. I'll have to look it up. I don't even know what the name, what the part number of the, is of for this set. So uh, it's, it's basically, it's got this indicator uh, with this attachment on it so that it fits right in this uh, mount on the mag stand. So this is a... This is a Starrett 25-631 uh, indicator. 
drop indicator and it's a half thousandth so it's a point zero 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 five inch indicator okay and it looks like it is a full one inch yeah it's a full one inch travel okay so nice enough indicator but then what they do is they put it in this set with this mag mount uh, this mag stand which is just really nice I mean I didn't even know Starrett made ones like this look how thick these arms are this is um, it's sort of like the robustness of my Noga big boy stand uh, there's a little bit of light rust on here that'll clean up no problem so this is a uh, Starrett 659 mag base so just so you can appreciate the size, this is the Starrett 657 base, which is uh, more more typical what you see. Look at the size of this thing compared to this. I don't remember what this thing, what the retail was on this thing, but it was it was nuts. I mean, it was just crazy expensive. Anyways, very, very nice uh, indicator. Um, I would probably have kept this for myself almost definitely uh, except um, I have a Noga Big Boy which as nice as this is the Noga Big Boy is actually nicer and um, I have so many drop indicators I could stick on that Noga Big Boy and recreate what this does secondly um, this selling this if I can get a, a decent decent amount of money for it uh, really helps chip into what I paid for all of this stuff, you know. So it doesn't really make sense for me to have as as nice as this is, and and how much I'd like to be able to just keep it in my personal collection. I think I'm going to have to let this thing go. All right, so we're going to call this episode quits here. I already uh, rambled way too much in this episode, so this is uh, part three. We'll call it wraps right here, and uh, we'll finish everything up in part four. I really appreciate you guys hanging in there and watching these videos. Uh, it seems like I'm not the only one who's a bit of a tool junkie and loves to watch these these kind of videos where people show what they get at auction and flea markets and stuff like that. One other thing I'd like to point out is I am less than 250 subs away from my 10,000 subscriber mark. So, yay! So I, uh, I appreciate it if you guys are not subscribers currently. If you'd consider subscribing to the channel, that'd be great. Uh, also, you guys that have been subscribers of mine for a while, maybe you could refer my channel. If you know somebody, if you think of somebody who might enjoy looking at this kind of stuff, uh, you know, let them know. Hey, you never know what you're going to get. The guy works on tractors one week, a motorcycle the next week, uh, makes a project with a lathe or a mill occasionally, uh, does a little welding occasionally, uh, channels all over the place. So like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, but there's a little something for everybody. All right. Take care.